and say go. How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and you are watching slash listening to the Commander Cafe. So today we have a new deck brew for you guys. Uh, it is Brea, Ethereum Shaper. So Brea is a one white, one blue, one black, and one red. So Wuber colors um, for legendary artifact creature human and when Rhea enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. And you can pay two, sacrifice two artifacts, and choose one of these effects. Brea deals three damage to target player. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. Or you gain five life. And she is also a 4-4. Four, four. Um, so this is one of the most popular decks on ADH Rect. It's probably my favorite that I have. Um, because it has lots of synergies, lots of intricate little interactions. Um, most of the time I'm playing this deck and I find some sort of combo that I didn't even plan to put in there. It just works out that I have so many synergies that once I get so many cards out, they work together really well. Um, and also, she has a lot of different ways you can build around her. Um, so like, if you want to focus on her gain 5 life ability, you could build a whole life gain deck around her. Um, you can just kind of build her the way you want. Mm -hmm. And also, she's very resilient. She has an easy time coming back, um, especially from board wipes, which we'll talk about once we get to the board wipe section. Um, because you have so many artifacts that aren't creatures, a lot of targeted removal and board wipes have a t tough time dealing with your board once it gets stabilized. Yeah, she's, she's really good at pointing out just her individual colors, even, mm -hmm. uh, because she has the blue thopters. She has white, gain five life, black, uh, target creature gets minus four minus four and red deal three damage to target player yeah i think out of all the four color commanders that came out in 2016 that she represents her colors probably the best mm -hmm. um, out of all of them so the stats for this deck you have 21 creatures 22 artifacts six instants five enchantments four sorceries three planeswalkers and 38 lands and then we also have 12 card draw 12 ramp, 4 board wipes, and removal, 4 to 5 with Brea um, being the 5th one in there. That's another reason I probably like this deck. It has lots of card draw. Um, it hits a lot of the marks we're looking to hit in that, those categories. Um, mm -hmm. So it does really well there. Yeah, it's a really stable deck. Yeah. You're rarely ever kind of out of state where you don't have any options of things to do. Yeah, it's stable and surprisingly consistent because even if you're even though you're drawing different cards, they synergize so well together that the consistency just seems like it's really high in this deck. Mm -hmm. So starting off, we are going to read off some of the card draw spells. Uh, Specifically the ones that are unique to Brea that you may not find in some other decks. Um, she, she runs them a little more than other decks normally would. Yeah. Uh, especially this first one, Icker Wellspring. Which is a two-mana artifact. When Icker... Wellspring enters the battlefield or is put into the graver from the battlefield draw a card. So it's really nice. You get two, two drop, you get to draw a card, but also um, you, you're looking for artifacts that you don't care about to sack to Brea, and the fact that you can sack this for, or well, next to free and get a benefit from it just makes it that much better. Yeah, it's one of those cards that... It's kind of rare to see it played. However, Bray is one of the few cards that can actually make use of it. Otherwise, it's pretty much only other Durevi. format Durevi. play is yeah Durevi and then Eggs and Modern. Yeah, so you definitely need a way to be able to sacrifice artifacts to have it make it worth it in there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we are makes it really good. Yeah, it's built into Bray herself. Mm -hmm. And then next up we have Skull Clamp, which is a one colorless. Uh, equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, minus one, and whenever equip creature dies, draw two cards. With an equip co cost of one. Um, so this is one that goes in most token decks, mostly because when they were designing it, they thought the minus one would make it worse, when it really makes it better, because it just means, like, if I have two Thopters and I need to draw cards right now, I can pay one mana, clamp onto one, kill it, draw two cards, and then if I need to clamp the other one, draw two more cards. So for two mana and two Thopters, I am drawing four cards. Mm -hmm. It's a really efficient card. Um, it's really one of the commander staples in a whole lot of decks. 
Next we have a new one from Almond Cat that I've really enjoyed. It's um, Pull From Tomorrow, which is two blue and X casting costs for an instant. Draw X cards, then discard a card. Um, the thing I like most about this is probably the fact that it's instant speed. Mm -hmm. So I can hold up all my mana, and I can use that if I need to to sack artifacts with Brea and give something minus four, minus four if it's coming at me. Or... And if it gets to um, in step before my turn, and I still have all that mana up, I can just sink it all into pool from tomorrow. Because one of the issues I have with a lot of the X casting cost spells is if they're sorcery speed, or um, you a lot of times you want to use all your mana for that to get the most out of that X. Well, that leaves you completely tapped out, and especially with Brave, you want to be able to do stuff on other turns. Yeah, this is very much a deck where, especially because of its artifact synergies, a lot of the time I know you're trying to get Vidalcan Ori out, mm -hmm. so you're going to be saving a lot of your mana for opponent's turns, yeah. and so this this is one card that doesn't even need that, and you can still do it. Yeah, speaking of, we'll go ahead and go into that. We have, this deck also has Vidalcan Ori, like you mentioned, which allows you to call, cast any non-land card at instant speed, and it also has Shimmer Mirror, which allows you to cast artifacts at instant speed. So it just goes along with that. I want to be holding on to my mana as much as possible so I can have lots of responses to my opponents with Brea or with other cards in my hand. Mm -hmm. Another of the draw spells is uh, from one of the recent commander sets, Mentor of the Meek. For two colorless and a white, you get a 2-2 creature, a uh, human soldier, and whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay one colorless. If you do, draw a card. So this gets really good with Brea because she makes two Thopters on her own. So if you have six or you have two extra mana of whatever Brea is costing with the commander tax at that moment, you can pay to cast Brea, and then she's making two Thopters. You can pay two mana to draw two more cards. Mm -hmm. So very efficient. Most token decks that have white are going to want this card, and Brea is no exception. Yeah, he's... I believe he's seen some price raise since he came out, just because he, he synergizes really well with all those token decks. So next up we have Ramp. And with Brea, it's, it's very easy to fall into the trap wall. I just want all the signets, and because they're artifacts that are automatically synergized with Brea, but there's actually better artifacts and better Ramp um, that synergize even better with her than just the signets. So first up we have Blink Moth Urn, which is... Five colorless, an artifact. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds a, a colorless mana to their mana pool for each artifact they control. So, yeah, this is going to help your opponent somewhat because odds are they'll have a soul ring, they'll have signets out or whatever, but it's going to help you the most. You're going to get 10 mana beginning of your um, your first main phase, colorless but most you're running so many artifacts that mm -hmm. you want the colorless anyway um, it doesn't really hurt you that much um, yeah the vast majority of this deck the creatures and the artifact section are both almost all also artifacts so all together i'd say there's probably 30 40 artifacts in the deck yeah there's very few um creatures in here that aren't artifacts if and or artificers so they care about artifacts in some way um, and all the ar artifact thopters that are coming in from Brea as yeah. well. Yeah, artifact thopters. There's just you have so many artifacts in here that you're going to be generating tons of mana from this card. Uh, next up, we have one of the probably best uh, cheap sack outlets is Ashnod's Altar. Three colorless mana for an artifact where you just sacrifice a creature to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. So this has a lot of combo potential, especially in Brea decks. Um, I have one infinite combo in the deck. I don't. There's more. Um, there's Thopter Foundry and, and Sword of the Meek, um, mm -hmm. which also combo with Astronaut's Altar. I don't run those um, just because combo infinite combos aren't exactly my thing. But I do have one in here because it almost seemed seemed wrong not to have it in a Brea deck. But yeah. Um, so the nice thing is the Thopters, you can sack to add two um, colorless mana. Even if you aren't comboing off, you have Sacrifice Fodder. Just because Brea sacks artifacts, um, you'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It helps also with activating her abilities. If you have spare Thopters, you can sacrifice some mm -hmm. to activate her ability and then sacrifice more to use them. 
yeah. them as well. The uh, next two are really similar but and um, very interesting that um, are very good inclusions in the deck. Kaladesh, the whole Kaladesh block was really a gold mine for Blaya decks. Um, so the first one from Kaladesh is Inspiring Statuary. Which is three colorless, an artifact, non-artifact spells you have, have Improvise. Which allows your artifacts to help pay for the cost. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless mana. So this does a great job of turning things like it and the Blink Moth um, urn into mana rocks. Um, you do, even though it is an artifact based deck, you are running enough um, non artifact cards like artificers and instants and sorceries that this does help, mm -hmm. and it gives you that free mana whenever you need it. Yeah, and the other one is Chief Engineer, which is a colorless and a blue. It's a Vidalkin Artificer, and artifact spells you have have Convoke. So your creatures can help cast those spells. Each creature you tap while casting an artifact spell pays for one colorless, or one mana of that creature's color. So you're, you have so many artifacts in here, um, and you're going to have enough artifact creatures with your Thopters. So you have Vraya out, she makes two Thopters. Once you get rid of the Summoning Sickness, you're going to have three mana if you tap all of those, but even if it's just a free Thopters. And if you have something like Vidalcan Orrery out, or Instance, um, you can block with a Thopter, tap in response before damage goes through to make the mana, and then cast cards off of that. So you're getting a blocker and mana from that Thopter. Um, yeah. And then you could also, in addition, do that and then sack it if you have the mana to Brea for her ability as well. So you can get a ton of value from this card. Yeah, all of these basically are turning every artifact or creature in your deck into mana dorks that without green, this deck is still surprisingly high with lots mm -hmm. of extra mana. And it does a really good job because there's been times where I've been mana screwed with this deck and I've it's been turn seven and I only have three mana, but because I had those two cards in my opening hand, I was able to get them out. My board state, you would not guess that I was stuck at three mana for seven turns. Mm-hmm. So the next category we have is board wipes. Uh, this deck runs four, four, four. or five right now. Um, I, I cut it down a little bit because Brea is very good at um, targeted removal um, on herself, so you don't need as many board wipes as I would. Four is still good. It's a good amount. Um, you can use whatever board wipes you want because white has a ton of them. Black has a bunch, so you're you can put in whatever board wipes you have available to you. One I would highly recommend for the deck, however, is Phyrexian Rebirth. Which is four colorless and two white. Sorcery speed. Destroy all creatures, then create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. So, one of the big problems with Border Wipes is when you cast them, you don't have enough mana to really do anything else that turn on most, most of the time. So your opponents all get a chance to recover from the Border Wipe before you do. Um, the fact that you get stuck with, you end up with this giant artifact creature, a lot of times 10 to 20 power and toughness, and the fact that it's artifact synergizes so well with the rest of the deck. Um, mm -hmm. It's one that I would probably not run in a lot of other decks, just because it is 6 mana to cast, but in a Brea deck, it being an artifact, it has so much synergy, I think it definitely deserves a spot in here. And then next, um, I did want to touch on that I took... I had Nev's Disc in here, um, but I ended up taking it out. And the reason being is I want my board wipes for this deck to kill creatures and not all non-land permanents or hit artifacts. Because one of the best things that makes Brea so resilient is you have so many artifact engines that can get online that if I can board wipe all the creatures... I'm going to be able to recover from that board wipe much quicker than most of my opponents because my artifacts are still there and I still have those engines online. Yeah, with with Neb's Disc, you would lose a whole lot of that unless you can make them indestructible. Yeah. Which, we do have Dark Steel Forge in here, um, but it is 9 mana, so it, you, you won't always have that out at the same time you have Neb's Disc out. Yeah, it's a much later in the game card to have. Uh, and then Single Target Removal. So this one is... Brea is surprisingly good. Um, when I first first saw her, I didn't think she would be as good at target removal as she is, but that minus four, minus four effect 
just tends to be good. A lot of creatures you care about are under four toughness, or a lot of times you can do it twice and give it minus eight, minus eight, which gets around that indestructible clause. So if it's indestructible, this will still kill it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then next we have Ether Sworn Adju- Adjungitator. <laughs> Educator? I don't. I don't know. That's it's. It's a good card. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, four colorless and a blue. You get an artifact creature with flying. It's a four four, and it has two different ab- mana abilities. Uh, one colorless, a white, and a black, and tapping it to destroy target creature or enchantment, and then a blue and two colorless to untap it. So this is just good target removal. Um, the fact that it's an artifact creature and is going to synergize well with the rest of the deck. The fact that it's flying in a four-four, um, you're going to, if you can. If there's nothing you're particularly concerned about, you can attack, and it's a decent body there. Um, but also the fact that it can destroy a target creature or enchantment. That flexibility there is is just good. And if you're holding up mana because you have a Dalkin Artery, and you can untap it. And, kill something else in addition it's just good yeah, always one of the it, it's a pretty good card in almost any esper deck that i can think of or mm. anything with more than uh the three colors and the nice thing about this one and brea is the fact that they're reusable target removal so the like source of plowshare and path to exile which i do have in the deck they're one-time uses um this deck doesn't have a lot of ways to recur instants it has a lot of ways to recur artifacts from the graveyard but not instance and sorcery so the fact that you can reuse this over and over again throughout the game a couple times makes it very good yeah it's, yeah it's really mana efficient for yeah. what you're getting and then next we have your infinite combo yeah this is the one infinite combo there's like i said a few you can also do um elder ride this elder razi displacer also makes an infinite combo um very similar mm-hmm. way but so I have Astronaut's Altar, Brea, and then Nim's Death Death Mantle. And Nim's Death Mantle is a two mana artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus two plus two, has intimidate and is a black zombie, but we don't care about any of that. The important thing is whenever a non token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay four. And if you do return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim's Death Mantle to it. So what you end up doing is you have Brea and any artifact out. You sack Brea and the Elder Artifact to, Nim, or not Nim's Death Mail, Asnald's Altar. Let Brea go to the graveyard, and then you use the four mana you just created by sacking them to bring Brea back with Nim's Death Mantle. Sacrifice Brea and one of the Thopters um, to Asnald's Altar, bringing it back with Nim's Death Mail. That nets you one Thopter each time you do this. So you can do it infinitely, make an infinite amount of Thopters, sack so many Thopters to Asnald's Altar to make the mana to use. Brea's ability, sacking the Thopters to kill everyone with three damage at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, overall, it's a really powerful combo, um, and actually pretty cheap to get out there because oftentimes you're not going to going to get targeted for having Ashnod's Alter out. Brea is your commander, so people expect to see that. Mm-hmm. And by the time you play Nim's Death Mantle, they're not going to yeah. see what hit them. Yeah, and. If you can sneak that out, and it's just instant speed, there's not a whole lot they can do about it. And there's a lot of, if you want to run them, I have a few tutors in here, um, not a whole lot, but there's a, quite a few that can get either Nim's Death Mantle or Asnald's Altar because they're limited to two mana artifact or three mana artifact. You can tutor them out pretty easily. And then some, uh, one of the underrated cards. This card, I, I, yeah, this one came out with, with the Brea deck, and I think that's the only time it's been printed. Um, but I, I've fallen in love with this card. It's bounced in and out, but um, the card in question is Fairy Artisan, which is a three mana, a, three generic mana, one blue, four mana total for a Fairy Artificer. Um, is a two-two flyer, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Then exile all other non. All, all other tokens created with fairy artisans. So basically, whenever someone casts a creature, you're getting a copy of it, and then when someone else, or that person, or the next person casts another creature, that one goes away, and you get the new one. Um, so some of the nice things I like about this Embrea is the fact that in Commander, we tend to have a lot of creatures with ETB effects. So each time someone plays a creature with an ETB effect, um, Marin decks, or 
like I said, most commander decks at least have some mm-hmm. ETB effects. You're getting all those benefits along with them. Yep. But also, when someone else casts a new creature and yours is going to on its way out, you can, if you have the mana, sack it to Brea to use one of her abilities. Mm-hmm. So really an efficient, almost combo piece to the deck. Mm-hmm. Um, you've gotten to do some fun plays with it before, too. Yeah, um, I've, I've, probably the biggest one I've ever hit with it was a Consecrated Sphinx that you had out. Um, so we both had Consecrated Sphinx that went to my turn. And then we just looped until I was drawing like sixty four cards. Um, it was eight, and that's how I tutored for my combo piece was with just, your consecrated sphinx. Yeah, <laughs> actually just drawing up your entire deck and figuring out with this deck that if you have that many cards in hand, you're you're gonna win the game. There's something in your hand um, that's gonna get you to that point. Yeah. It just tends to be good. Um, people are going to have creatures you're going to want to copy. Um, we do have the mirror from... Mirage mirror from... Uh, Amonkhet or our... Hour of Devastation. Hour of Devastation. So um, copying creatures, ten, opponent stuff tends to be good. Mm-hmm. So if they play a creature that has haste and they want to attack with it, you can, bl- chump, you can block with this and trade so they're not going to want to sh- swing at you. And even going around, you have a chump blocker that you can freely just block in front of something because you know when someone casts a new creature, you're going to have a new one to replace it anyway. Yeah, so you're, there's very little actual downside to this card unless mm-hmm. someone's playing cards that don't benefit them. Yeah. Because <laughs> the, the odds of that actually happening are not very high. If they're playing card creatures that don't benefit them, then I'm not really concerned about their deck anyway because I that's not going to be a good deck. Yeah. So... Um, but yeah, we'll have the deck list for this down below. And uh, once again, if you guys have any uh, comments about this deck, things you want to use would be good inclusions or things you don't think should be included, let us know in the comments. Yeah. yeah, this is a very fun deck. If you're looking for a deck that has a lot of synergies, a lot of small interactions that will surprise you each time you play it, um, if you like combo pieces, lots of synergies, um, you'll probably like this deck, so definitely give it a try. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. If you can find it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's one of the now hardest to find of the 2016 Commanders, second only to Bra- or Atrexa, <laughs> yeah. who is just very expensive at this point. Yeah. But I- Very good deck, very strong, um, and you can... And it has a lot of different ways you can go with it. If you want to build it heavy combo, you can put those other combo pieces in with more tutors Mm -hmm. and make it really spiky and competitive and make it a good deck that way. Or you can just have a lot of good crude value from the artifacts. There's, I'm fairly certain, token spam decks with this. Mm -hmm. There's life gain. There's uh, artifact even more tribal than this. There's less tribal. There's some that are just completely jank throw it together and it still manages to work itself out so so Brea is definitely one of my favorite commanders a lot of fun to play with so give her a try Mm -hmm. Uh, and then if you like this video go ahead and uh, like and subscribe Uh, tell your friends share our uh, channel to your friends and hopefully soon we can start doing some giveaways to those who subscribe to us so definitely something to keep your eye out for yep don't forget to follow us on twitter and don't forget to hit that subscribe button it helps out a lot guys and we post a new video every friday afternoon so you should be seeing some more of these deck brews from us coming up soon make sure when you subscribe you hit that notification bell so that you get the notifications when we do post new videos and i think that's all we have so have a good weekend guys see you next time